Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. You might notice that my partner does not prepare for channeling. And in an older energy, it was necessary to prepare. For what happens corporally to the human body during trance must often be preceded by purification. And so you will see a lot of those beginning by breathing. And using the balanced breathing techniques will clear and purify certain parts of the brain, give them the needed oxygen they need, tell the body something is going on, and calm you down. And my partner doesn't do it. There are others who have said that a posturing of the human being in a certain attitude, the development of certain frequencies from meditation and toning would be needed in order to do what you hear now. And they'd be right. And all of it is good. And you don't see him do that either. And so it would lead some to say he's not doing it right. And others to say he's not doing it at all. And they would use this and tell you because they do not see the preparation, therefore it isn't real. And that is your discernment, is it not, dear ones? You're starting to see some big shifts, and my partner is aware of them, and four years ago, he made his. And four years ago, I asked him if he was ready for the next step, and he said, whatever it is. And that step was what we are talking about today. It is a melding of you and your higher self so that corporally you don't have to do those things you're already there and what it does is to change the way you think how you act how you age and so many things that you have not thought about or you're unaware of that are coming for the future and so this particular channeling for the group tonight and those who wish to listen right now has yet again to do with the changes that are coming in the human being it's an extension of the last channel we gave or thereabouts the last <laughs> It's an extension of the information about humans and how they're evolving. And before we get into it, we just want to pause a moment. I want to refine a concept for you of what is taking place right now. Where is my partner? <laughs> is he in the chair or not? The answer is absolutely. Where is my partner's consciousness while I channel through him? And an old energy will say, well, he had to go into the closet. <laughs> he had to get away. Because it became a takeover of the body. And that's not true. You want to know where he is? He's right in front of you. I am using everything he has. To deliver this message and corporally everything he has is filled right now with me and that's the difference dear ones you don't throw a switch anymore and become something else or someone else or have messages from beyond that are not part of your consciousness you have to understand where this is going for the clarity and the purity you're going to have to become it 
And so the meld took place and the difference in him is seen by some. For as he walks around, he thinks differently. He sees people differently. He knows it. He didn't expect it. It's given him a different perception of what things might be in areas he has no idea about. And we want to talk about this. And it's difficult because it does have minutia that is academic, hard to understand, and not necessarily translatable in your language. But we use my partner's intellect, his ability to conceive what it is I'm giving you, and him, and his ability to translate it without filters the best he can. Now in order to do this properly, I have to review what has been done. But I'm not ready to do that yet. Because I'm enjoying too much being with you and being quiet. I know you. I would like to tell you right now in this room, there are so many who have joined you right now. And I'm not talking about the entourage, I'm talking about humans who are listening later. And we said this before, they're listening later for you. <laughs> they're listening now for them. So who's right? And what is now? And the answer is you're both in the now, are you not? And so in an odd way that is not in 3D, you are joining together right now. Now. <laughs> the ones listening later have a reality just like yours now. And so they're feeling what you're feeling. And you can't put it on a timeline. I want you to see this because it increases the potential of the family dynamic. How many are with you now? Take away the clock. Put it in a circle. Put time in a circle, a very small one. So everything happens at the same moment. Even that which may happen next week or next month with a recording like this is happening in your reality now. Do you see the family dynamic? Old souls are the ones most prone to listen to this information. Old souls are the ones who are most prone to be in the chairs. And it doesn't matter how old they are physically. Some of the oldest souls on the planet alive today are under 20. They have to be, dear one. They have to be. So gone is the, is the tradition that the elder holds the best information. It simply is not the way it is anymore. Now it has to do who is the Akashic elder in the group? <laughs> who has been here the longest? For they will have the wisdom of the ages. And they represent the ancients like no one can. And that's part of what we want to talk about. So let us begin a summary of what we were talking about last time in channel when the subject came up of the spiritual involvement of humanity. Now in order to cover this properly we review this. Human DNA is not operating at a percentage of efficiency that is measurable past slightly over 30 percent. So everything that is inside you, that makes you you, is operating at less than half of what it could. Now this isn't something the Pleiadians gave you. It is something you developed over years. A free choice of a duality. You selected how much dark and light to put and where to put it 
You have selected how well you think and how much your societies are going to absorb the idea that compassionate thought will heal the planet. You select whether you're high-minded or medium-minded or even low-minded. This is the freedom of free choice of the planet. This is the test. Always has been. But the test that is the primary, and I would say basic one, has now shifted, and you're graduating. So profoundly, we have told you in the past, that you will see the growth of human intelligence and compassion. And you're going to see it at the corporeal level as well, because as human DNA starts to work at a better efficiency, it's going to be obvious. And we've given you those channels, and you can look for them. The last one was titled Conceptual DNA. We talked about a corporeal human being who stopped having what we would call linear immune reaction. Linear immune reaction is when the white cells of the body see a problem, race to that problem, and fight it. And that's as smart as it gets. And the problem may be beyond their ability to fight. Because the white cells corporally do not have the intelligence to see the concept of the invader. Viruses notoriously seem intelligent, for they have what you would call a plan. And the white blood cell only knows defense. It doesn't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know anything about cancers or how they operate or how they defend or how they're immune to white blood cells, basically. And so conceptual DNA becomes corporeal systems that know concepts. And that creates a human being who can fight any virus and any disease because that part of the immune system is as smart as anything that can invade. It's conceptual. This is an evolvement of human DNA past 30%, moving more toward 35 and 40. How many masters do you know on the planet who died of a virus? <laughs> Most of them died at the hands of other human beings. The masters of the planet had DNA that operated far better than yours. Even some recently having the ability to create and manifest things in their hands. Mind consciousness over matter. Human beings' mind can control physics, and that was the design. Consciousness over physics is the plan, always has been. What do you think about spontaneous remission? What is it? How does it work? Does it require outside influence, or was it created internally? And the answer is, this is DNA working at about a hundred percent for a moment. And it's unexplainable, but you can see it and you can recognize it and document it that the human can clean themselves up of almost any disease almost overnight. And we give you enough of those episodes so you can see what we're talking about and there is credibility in what comes next. Now that was the review. I want my partner to go slow here. For just recently there have been channels where I've given him information and there were simply no words for it because there is no description, definition, or nomenclature for what he discusses. So he has to talk around the subject, or perhaps even make up words or phrases to get across what we want you to know about. Dear ones, we're giving you this channel in honor of the potentials to come. We want you to know that you've done something. 
We want you to recognize that over a period of time, the humanity has the potential of shifting into a far greater kind of human being than you've ever seen. It runs contrary to everything you've ever been taught. It runs contrary to some of your belief systems that said you were, you, were, you were spiritually born dirty and that God didn't care about you. It runs contrary to, to what people have said about the future of the planet. Ingrained in you is the idea you're not going to make it. You're going to have to get over that. I've got three concepts for you. And it's a continuation of the evolvement of human DNA. But instead of this being called conceptual DNA, this particular channel, we're going to call conceptual consciousness. You have to understand that your DNA also is responsible for how you think. For the very synapse and the instructions of how your brain works is also in your DNA. How you cognize things, how you work with each other, it's all part of the blueprint and the stem cells of every part of your brain. But we start to talk about the ethereal and esoteric things that are also involved in your body. We have mentioned that part of your body which is called innate, the smart part, the part that you muscle test, is beginning to meld with common consciousness at a three-dimensional level. All that means in the past, as a summary, is we've told you that you will have a better idea of what's going on at the cellular structure than you've ever had before. This is coming. Doesn't it make sense that this would be one of the evolved steps? There is a relationship, however, that is very esoteric. It is not necessarily on your mind about your Akash. So the first evolvement we wish to speak of is what we're going to be calling Akashic conceptual remembrance. Let's look at your Akashic record in your DNA at the moment and how it functions. How many of you are aware of your past lives? And the answer is not many. You sit in an attitude of belief. And you know you're an old soul, but you cannot necessarily do what a past life reader does and pull out the ones that are most important, most dramatic, or that perhaps you have to heal. At the moment, the Akashic remembrance in your cellular structure is not all that smart. All it gives you is that which sticks out because it was dramatic. For light workers, it gives you lack of self-worth. Because the things that stick out, old souls, are the times that you've had trouble with spiritual things. Are you aware of that? And so you sit in an audience and you have something in common, which we have discussed before. Now why is that? And that is because there is a linear remembrance in your Akash that only allows for the problems to stick up. And the good parts, they get beat back by the dramatic parts. You'll have a tendency to remember and dream about those past lives that you had blockages today because of them. That you have to get cert certain things cured and healed because it was so profound in a past life that it still has a residual with you today. And that is a past life reader's job to help that, to work with that. Now you consider that's just the way it works. And I'm telling you right now, that's a 30 percenter way it works. What if the Akashic and the innate work together? 
to create something that is more conceptual. What if the Akashic Remembrance started to know what's good for you instead of simply blasting you with stuff that you did or stuff you had to get over or things that were ultra dramatic and instead saw the human being as an evolving spiritual part of the planet and delivered to you instead the things that you should remember that are going to help you and push the envelope of belief Akashic remembrance let's say you come into the planet let's say your next incarnation after you wake up and after you grow up and whatever age that is you start to remember what happened this time including today Hmm. including remembrance of who you are including the things to do and not to do it may have got you in trouble this time around because you were ignorant and you're not anymore do you understand what I'm saying an Akashic remembrance that is conceptual working with innate that will deliver to you on a plate practically the wisdom that you have as an old soul today Some of you will have it by the time you're eight. Some of it will take a little longer. That's what's in store just the next time around for an old soul. It's a potential of a real change in the way the human body works. Crying, is this new? Not really. <laughs> new to you. New to you. This is the way it was supposed to work had you allowed it. Do you understand that by passing the marker of 2012 into this energy where you start to recalibrate the planet, you have given permission to start a climb of efficiency into your DNA. And it may take generations, dear ones. I'm giving you information that's going to happen. And you will allow it or not allow it but it's going to happen on a timeline that what I'm saying is you create through allowance how hard is the old energy gonna push back it'll slow things down we told you that but spiritual evolution cannot be stopped and you're gonna start to see it and I'm not done that's number one number two is the hardest one now my partner I just want you to think for a moment and go slowly I'm about to give you a concept that you've never seen before and it's the way synapse works in your brain I'm even going to try to give you a name for it future potential reasoning future potential reasoning now go slow the way human beings think at the moment is linear now the brain is a beautiful computer and it's the fastest thing you have you're not aware of what it goes through but let me just briefly tell you that the human brain is based upon experiences it's a storehouse of everything you've ever done in your brain to help you with what you're about to do it's simple and it's complex when the human approaches a flight of stairs the brain sorts through everything it's ever seen to recognize stairs and it says yes it remembers them, it knows how to climb them, and all is well. If it had never seen stairs, it would be different. As a child, you can imagine how many experiences the child has to have in order to have these kinds of things occur to it. And so it is linear. No matter what you do, you are presented with all of the images and all of the memories your brain calculates for you 
what to do. You come into a room like this, you see other people, you see chairs, it's not a mystery. Your brain puts it in perspective, you know you can sit down, select, it's automatic. If you have any idea the amount of computation power it takes to do that. <laughs> Imagine sorting through life so you can sit in a chair. But that is what the brain does for you. And it's good at it. It's survival, it's protection. It helps you when you meet people to say the right things. Your brain sorts through reactions that you've had in the past to conversations or the right words, the way you look. And this is the linear brain at its best. And it suits you very well. Now I'm going to present something new. Let's talk about chess. The chess master sits at the board. Now this is a metaphor. And the board represents the puzzles and realities of life, which we're going to call 3D. You live and you walk in 3D and the puzzles are based upon gravity, <laughs> height, width, depth, and time. All of these things are your reality, and this is how you work. You've got to fit into all of them. And you do. And it's the chessboard of life. And before you make a move, as a chess master, what are you going to do? You are going to evaluate the potential reaction of your move. And there may be five or six of those, depending upon the puzzle before you. How many people are involved? Is it sitting in a chair? Is it talking to your boss? What is it? Now the chess master is not done. For he will look at the highest potential of what that might be, that reaction, and plan the move around that reaction. Now he's up to two moves. He is looking at the potential future of what might happen based upon his projections and experience and intuition. He is calling upon an innate ability that not many have. A mind that computes future potentials. Now he's on his third move. What would happen if this took place and that took place and he moved here and there? What would that cause from those players around him on the puzzle? What might they do? What's the highest potential? What if they did nothing and, and gave him another potential? What would he do then? He's up to four moves. Do you see where this is going? You're not a chess master unless you've got five moves ahead. You've got to look at every potential that might occur and what that opponent, that is to say, the one who has to interface with you, might do. Up to five moves. Can you imagine the brain power it takes for this? And then he moves his piece. The chess master has a certain amount of time to compute that, and he does, and he sits there, and you can watch his brain moving as he looks around the board and he examines life. Now I want to tell you that this is another aspect of what the human being is going to move into. And I'm going to show you why it's needed and I'm going to give it to you in the most practical way I can. Many of you have children so let's let's do this as a metaphor two siblings approximately a year to a year and a half apart are together and the dynamics are often the same it doesn't matter whether they're brothers or brothers or sisters or sisters or brothers or sisters they are sitting perhaps at the table and one does something the other one doesn't really like he hoards food, won't give the piece of the cookie, whatever. Parents, you see this many times. And so the other one is irritated. Will try to grab the candy. The other one will grab it back. Then the other one will swat the other one, and the other one will swat him back. <laughs> Soon there's a contest going on. 
perhaps even temporary uncomfort and injury, crying, drama, and mama comes to step in. <laughs> I think you're familiar with the scenario. And it's endless, is it not? And it goes on all the time until some maturity comes in or until they separate. <laughs> now I want to run the process again. And I want you to pretend that these children have evolved in a way that I have just described is possible. The one child does something the other child does not like. Same scenario. But right away, instead of grabbing the candy, if the child has intuitive future potential reasoning, like lightning and fast, he will run the scenario of what happens if he grabs the candy. He may not have the experience or the maturity, but he'll have potential reasoning and he will see that it will end badly and he won't get the candy not only that he might have to go to his room he's got it all in five moves and so he does nothing he does nothing or he may move away or he may get up and that will be the biggest objection he'll simply leave the table. Why do I give you this? Why am I concentrating on this? Because human being, if you get to that point, do you understand how you are going to war? <laughs> you won't. Because you will know the future projection of death, destruction, sorrow, and a bad outcome. And it'll be in your mind like the chess player can see it unfolding and you're not going to go there and that will be intuitive. Do you understand what this is? A human race whose propensity will be to walk away. <laughs> and I'm telling you this is not that far away. Have you seen the, the holdouts that you have right now in the world in the various countries that still want to make trouble and you got to look at them and you go where are you and and why don't you join the earth that's not what we do anymore it's already occurring that's a hard one relationships you don't have to guess anymore you can see it it'll be instinctive and intuitive future potential reasoning lightning fast you won't even know you have it except that you'll think differently when you meet somebody for the first time there's a protocol that humans have uncertainty sometimes fear there's a wall between you what if instead you were able to look inside and see the God in them first and you saw oh it's family that's intuitive that's instinctive it's coming the very way you greet each other what you can see within each other how you love one another it all is going to change I can't tell you when I can't even tell you you're going to be here in this corporeal body that's up to you but I can tell you this is what's happening a third one and we'll let you go control over subconscious <laughs> right now you don't have it what some have called the not self and others have called the subconscious which is not you but that which lies under you in your thought that is an irritant because it gives you fear. It's the what if part of your brain. And it's the part that is difficult to keep some of you at bay, beat up, and not 
getting out because what if you don't present a good face? What if you go and you catch a disease? What if, what if, what if? And so you stay home and you do nothing. And then pretty soon you realize that's not even you talking. The subconscious represents a very active duality. <laughs> what if I told you that in this new conceptual human being the conceptual part of your brain is going to see it for what it is and put it in the back seat where it belongs. That's a metaphor. And so as you move forward in life you won't have the disturbing fears. To some of you the, the agonizing doubts that you've tried to conquer all your life. I know who's here. <laughs> and wouldn't it be nice to just identify it and put it away. And I'm telling you that's the Nate's job and it's going to work very well. These things I've just given you are starting to occur in humanity and you're going to see some with it like everything else that happens. <clears throat> When my partner started talking about the new consciousness of children on the planet, which you called indigo, over a decade ago, there were all many, already a lot of them, and now most of them are that way. So that is the way that the involvement will work with this too. Already on the planet, you're going to see these things. But within 10 to 15 years, the potential is that it's going to be a lot bigger than it is now. What it means, dear human beings, is that human nature is changing. You'll call it many things. Psychologists will call it increased maturity. This will appear that way because that's the way it'll look. Scientists will take a look at how you fight disease and say the human being is developing immunities that is new and they'll never go to where I went today a DNA that is starting to see the instructions and work better work with the stem cell information a little better than it has before developing a human that eventually will think like masters oh there's more but not today Just what I told you today would be enough to create a life that is so different than anything you're used to now. And the final thing I will say to you is that you don't have to have another body to make this happen. <laughs> if you believe in spontaneous remission, you know that anything we're talking about now is available to you in real time, old soul. We don't want you to leave and come back in order to facilitate these things. We want you to create them now. See these things as possible in your own bodies and claim them, dear ones. There are those in this room who have healed themselves from disease. So why do you stop there? Take a look at what the potentials are. It'll change your countenance, your fears how people see you, how you react or don't. And you become a model of the future. And that's what old souls are here for. And that's my message of the day. There is such an honoring of your process. Do you know how I can tell you these things? Because we've seen it before. You're not the first planet to have graduated into this. Did you know that life in a galaxy is based on DNA? And you're going to see that. It's not unique to Earth. It's everywhere. And you're going to see that. As soon as you find any other life that's microbial, anywhere on any moon or planet in the future and analyze it, you're going to find the double helix. <laughs> Get ready for it. Get ready for it. We've seen this before. 
So we know the potentials before you. And so it is. <laughs>